Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. Welcome back to another Swamp and Stomp episode. We are now kicking off the 2021 hunting season and down here in South Florida, we are in full swing into archery. This is our second weekend in, third weekend if you're hunting private land. We were able to get out and uh, try our hand at one of the quota hunts down in Southwest Florida. And this is the episode, but before we jump into it, I wanted to say thank you to all of the new subscribers. If this is your first time to our channel, Make sure you hit the little bell notification because we're going to have a lot of uh, content coming out over the next few weeks. Also, if you have not already, make sure you check out our giveaway. The details are down in the description. We are giving away a tether um, saddle and platform and everything you need to get into saddle hunting. You got to come up with your own climbing system, but everybody's different. Some people like to use sticks. Others like to use um, rope methods. But anyway, check that out it's uh, down in the description. Thank you for joining us. We are um, happy to, ha to have you. And also I wanna give a special thank you to our Patreon members. All you guys are the ones that make this channel successful. And uh, you are the reason we are able to do all the giveaways and all this really cool stuff. So thank you for, su for um, supporting us. Also, if you wanna save any kind of money, Check out the stuff down in the description. We have all kinds of coupons that saves you money and it's a way of supporting the channel. We do get a little bit of kickback from those. So um, please go ahead and check that out after the video. <clears throat> so if you've been with us for a little while, you'll notice that this is something new. I've never really set up in a studio like this. Um, it's something that I'm trying out and it's kind of, there's a purpose behind it. Um, this last, weekend that we went hunting, something happened with my camera gear and the audio stopped recording. And uh, so I got to kind of make up for that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll the video and every now and then I'm going to go ahead and come back in here and kind of explain what's going on and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, before we get too far along in this video, I want to take a second to give a shout out to David Martin. He's one of our subscribers and this guy is a Florida Swamp Slayer. He's uh, slaying deer every year in the Florida Swamps. He goes all the way down to South Florida, all the way up to the Panhandle. He's getting it done all over the place here in Florida. Um, so guys, make sure you go check out his page, Swamp Walker. And as they say, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. His dad is an unsung Florida legend. This guy's slaying bucks with a trad bow. Check him out. Um, BC Hunter is his dad's page. Anyway, show them guys some love. Go follow the page. They have some really cool content. If you want a chance to get shout out by Swamp and Stomp, take a picture of this video and go ahead and uh, put it on your story on Instagram and make sure you tag Swamp and Stomp. And uh, I'll let you continue your video. So I'm working my way back into this oak hammock that I was scouting on the on hunt stand and it looks like it's right off the edge of some other property and it's pretty far out here it's about two miles I don't think there's gonna be a I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people coming out here and on the way out here I can do a little bit of spot and stalking so far I've seen about four bucks four shooter bucks and a bunch of does. Uh, and the areas that I've seen, I'm gonna be really tough to get close to them, but this spot that I'm going to gives me a lot of tactical advantages for a spot in stock because there's drainage ditches, there's mounds, and there's different spots depending on what the wind is doing. I can drop into one of those and move to get around to the, uh, to the deer. So right now I'm just kind of Trying to get out here and see what I'm seeing on the map is exactly what I want to see in person. This is 
those maps sometimes can be outdated. Oh. I'm going to keep uh, working my way back here. Pretty gnarly storm going on over here behind me. But my, my camera guy, Mark, has split off. And he's hunting another piece of the property. Um, his camera guy arrived, so... We see some really nice bucks going in and out of here. So I'm gonna try to make a move on them. Um, I'm gonna work the edge of these myrtles here. I'll show you on the map. I'm gonna work the edge of these myrtles into the area that we last saw the buck. He's a big gnarly buck, so hopefully I can see him. If not, he did have another buck with him, which we haven't seen again, but Apparently he was in here this morning. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this edge. There's rubs all up in here. All these little myrtle trees are rubbed up. There's like scrapes and everything everywhere. So I'm really hoping that uh, they're still using this area. Some of the rubs look pretty old. The bucks no longer have velvet on them, but maybe they're still doing like territorial rubs or something. I'm pretty much just gonna gonna get in here and do like a, a ground hunt. There isn't really any trees to set up on. So I'm gonna sit down under one of these uh, myrtle trees and try to blend in the best I can. I've been looking on hunt stand to figure out what's my best route to get in here and I think I have a pretty good plan so we'll see if it pans out. So the following morning we decided to go ahead and start where we left off the day before and uh, we did exactly that and um, we got out there real early and as the sun starts to come up all we can see is fog. I usually try to arrange trees in my general area to kind of get an idea in case I have to put a quick shot and I'm able to arrange the deer exactly where he is and kind of guesstimate. Well I wasn't even able to arrange the nearest tree and uh, my rangefinder, every time I try to use it, it kept saying seven yards. And I know this tree is not 70 yards, it's more like 30 or 40 yards away. And I've experienced this in other occasions. So we just kind of hung out for a little bit. Once we were able to get a, a true range on um, one of the nearby trees, we decided to go ahead and start moving. So after going over the hunt stand app and kind of getting a game plan together, we decide that we're going to go ahead and kind of head um, south on this property and then get up to a drainage canal. And then we're gonna work our way uh, west up this drainage canal and use the wind um, as the best we can. Now, the wind wasn't really uh, in our favor. It was going due east, but we figured, you know, if we can kind of like stop along the way and glass to uh, the north and south, we can go ahead and kind of hopefully make a move on something that way. Now this drainage canal has a couple different smaller canals that break off the side of it. So it's pretty convenient. If we did see something, we can drop down into one of those and kind of make a move on it. So at the very beginning, we ended up seeing like three or four does and they were all by themselves. They didn't have any bucks with them, but it was really neat seeing them like traveling down through um, this particular piece of the property with all the fog and such. So we continued our way up this little drainage and sure enough, we see another doe probably about 200 yards away. And she didn't have a care in the world. She was just basically grazing in a little pond and we ended up getting by past her without spooking her at all. So finally we make it up to this mound. Once we get to the mound, we're kind of glassing the area and we see a, a, a spike working the edge of the fence. He's kind of just kind of moving along the fence line and, and grazing as he moves along. Um, eventually somebody came by and spooked him off. So we sat there for around another two hours or so. And then um, then we spot an eight pointer more or less where we saw the spike. And this, this eight pointer was kind of in the same pond. He was there for a little while. And then um, he was probably there for like a solid 30, 40 minutes. And then he moved on. And then what he went down to some dog fennels ended up bedding. So I told Luke, you know, this, this is a perfect scenario. We have this deer about 400 yards away and he just now bedded down in some dog fennels that are well above his head. 
So we decided, let's go ahead and make a move on them. We quickly pack up our stuff quietly and we start making a, a beeline towards the opening in the fence. Once we get to about 200 yards away, this buck stands up. He stands up in the dog fennel and he's just kind of looking around. So Luke and I got down and we're just watching him. Eventually, he goes ahead and lays back down and then we close the distance. We went ahead and went another 100 yards. And at this point, we were extremely quiet. We went ahead and took off our backpacks, took off our boots, and then removed our socks as well because it's game time. It's time to get as close as possible, as quiet as possible. So I figured we're going full ninja mode. So now both Luke and I are certified ninjas. We have no uh, shoes on. We're, we're straight barefooted and we start making our move. Um, so there's another opening in this other gate. We start making our way over there slowly but surely. We get through the gate and then in between us and the buck, there's a small creek. Well, as soon as we get up to that creek, I didn't even see them. They just kind of jumped out of nowhere. Two black bellies jump up out of this creek and they fly up. And when, when black bellies fly, or if they're spooked or anything, they do this whistle. And they're black belly whistling ducks. So they jump up and, and they land. They land probably like 10 feet away from me. And then I'm, there, I'm like, oh no. You know, I thought we were busted for sure. But for whatever reason, the deers didn't stand up. These black bellies jump up again. They land another 15 feet away. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to kill these bellies, these black bellies. Just kidding, we're not gonna kill them because they're out of season. But anyway, <coughs> I wanted to kill them at that point. Um, eventually, they just kind of put their heads down and, and went away. We weren't busted. So I told Luke, I told him to go ahead and fall back, stay at least 20, 30 yards behind me, but do as I do. If you see me stop, you stop. If I drop, you drop. And just keep an eye on you know the deers as well. So we start moving in at a turtle's pace. Once I got to about 90 yards from these deers, I rolled up my pants, got them, got them above, up to my knees so that my pants are rubbing against the grass. This grass is pretty tall and it was starting to making sounds like a shh, shh, as I'm walking through. So I start really sneaking up to them. Once we get to roughly about 70 yards, I'm kind of like watching the, the area to make sure there's no other deers there. And sure enough, there's a doe standing just maybe 20 yards from this buck, but he she's a little bit to the uh, west of him. She's got me pegged. I'm like, oh man, I'm busted. So you can't see her right here, but she, she's watching me and I'm just trying to stay still. Uh, and eventually, for whatever reason, she laid back down. So I continue moving forward. She pops up again and she's got me pegged. And I'm like, all right, now she's definitely gonna blow and take off. But sure enough, she didn't. She just kept watching me for a few minutes and then she'd look over towards the buck's area and she'd look at me and then she'd look at the buck and then she'd lay back down. I'm like, all right, now I gotta really try to sneak up and try not to get her to stand up again. So I start moving in even slower. Then the buck stands up. I'm like, oh boy. So I drop down and uh, you can see I, I drop down right here and I'm, I'm kind of watching him through the grass. Luckily, when I did drop, I had dog fennel in between me and this buck, so he really can't see me that well. Or if he can, he can't really make out what I am. So I'm, I'm trying to range out, range more or less where he's at. All I'm getting is a dog fennel, and the dog fennel was like 15 yards in front of me. He looks like he's way closer, but this buck was about 45 yards out. I start telling Luke, you know, stay down. He's coming over. For whatever reason, the buck starts walking directly towards us. And then he pegs Luke. Luke is out in the open. He's pretty much just st sitting in, I don't know, maybe a foot, 18 inches of grass. And this buck has him pegged. He puts his head back down and starts walking again towards us. He closes the distance. He ends up at 45 yards from me. At the time, I didn't know. I'm trying to range him, but I can't because the dog fennel in the grass is blocking my, my view. So I'm like, all right, I can't get him ranged. Let me start ranging these these poles and kind of get an idea a rough guesstimate. So I start trying to range the fence poles and even then I can't get those on the range finder. I kept getting weird ranges, 15, seven yards, eight yards, 20 yards, 30 yards. It was all over the place. <coughs> so I ended up just putting the range finder down and I figured, okay, if he gets to the dog fennel, I know that's 30 yards away. Um, I can go ahead and draw up at that point and, and get him. Well, unfortunately, 
that didn't happen. At this point, my heart is pounding through my chest. And all I can see is this buck's rack coming up above the, his ears. And um, he started making the decision that he was going to go ahead and run. So I got my rangefinder in my hand, getting ready for him to make a turn. And as soon as he turns, I popped up, got a range 45 yards. And you can see I went ahead and tried to draw up on him, but he was gone. He wasn't having it. And then a few minutes later, um, we didn't get it on video, but the doe blew and got out of there as well. That was the closest, uh, closest I've ever been to a getting a buck on during a spot and stock. This was an extremely fun experience, and I, I really learned a lot. Um, I definitely want to do it again, and uh, hopefully next time I'll actually be able to harvest the buck. But it was a really fun um, learning experience. If you guys haven't done it, I encourage you to go do it, try it out. You know, it's really something that you wouldn't think that you'd be able to get that close to them. But this being my very first time and I was able to get this close, it tells me that I can definitely do it and I can do it here in Florida, which is even cooler. Um, I think there's a lot of other states that are more suitable for this kind of hunting, but I mean, it, it's possible. You know, it's possible here in Florida as well. There's actually a lot of guys that do it successfully. So I'm really, I'm really excited to learn this new um, strategy and put it to use. I got a really, a lot of really good tips from Eric Ruiz. If you guys don't, don't know about him, check him out on Instagram. He's a really uh, good hunter. He actually does mostly spot and stalking and he's very successful at it. Um, so check him out. He, we actually were able to team up with him and he harvested a buck with us um, during this weekend. Uh, that, that episode is gonna be coming up pre pretty soon. Well, in the beginning of this video, you saw somebody riding a bike with a buck. That's uh, one of our newest members of Swamp and Stomp and he was actually able to get opening morning success um, check out his hunt right here. It's always funny. There's so much anticipation for this first hunt. When you get out here and you just wait and wait. Sooner or later that pays off. Hopefully it's my day. You try to be as still as possible. And we hope something's gonna happen. 6.49 now. Sunrise is in 10 minutes. Fingers crossed. The record button didn't come on. I just smoked a little deer. I just smoked a deer. Yeah, it's down. So, I smoked a buck right about there, 30 yards. He only ran 20. He's right in there. I heard him thrash. But, uh, I can't see him. He's down, not gonna lie. This buck snuck right up on me. It's just, uh, he's walking right inside of that edge. I didn't see him until he popped out at 30, 40, 30 to 40 yards, and he's just walking along. He came, uh, he came right here. Perfect slight quarter away. Just stood there, put his head down and fed for a second. I smoked him. He didn't go uh he didn't go twenty yards. Um I can't see him, but I know he's piled up in there. It's always always tough. You know. They always sneak right up on you. Sometimes they come walking out in the open, but I'd take it like this any day. Doesn't give you a chance to get nervous. You just you just get ready and shoot. Man, I'm really bummed I didn't get it on camera. I opened it and hit the record button, but the camera hadn't booted up yet, so it's 7.30. I smoked them about 7.15. So I give them another 15, 20 minutes and make sure he's good and dead pick him up. I heard him pile up though. He was thrashing in there so I'm pretty confident I won't have any issue. I'll get back with you guys on the ground. I 
don't see the arrow. Oh, there it is. Right here. Clean pass through. Right there. Rage, baby. Look at that blood. Alrighty. Keep coming. You ready? Mm -hmm. That again. So I hit him a little back. Not, not right where I would have liked. It came out good on the other side. A little thick. But still put a big old hole in him. Not that far back. That's a good long shot. Other side came out good, but swamp is not baby. We're in the swamp. Nice. Congratulations. Good kill. And don't forget to go down in the description right after this video and get into our uh, quarterly giveaway. We're giving away that saddle. And lastly, um, make sure you check out our Patreon page. Um, that's how we're able to do these really cool giveaways and uh, this this season we are actually going to be doing a Patreon hunt. We actually we got cameras rolling out in the woods right now and we're going to do everything for that Patreon member that wins that hunt. We're going to go ahead and um, do the scouting. We're going to go and uh, set them up for the we'll, we'll camp and all that stuff. We're going to cover the food, beverages, all that stuff is going to be basically the closest thing that you can get to a guided hunt from Swamp and Stomp. We're not guides. This is going to be on public land, so we do not promise success, but we're going to have a really good time. And if you want to get in on that, make sure you join our Patreon member um, page. And um, yeah, so that's about it. Thanks for checking us out and uh, be safe out there. Good luck out there in the woods. Make sure you practice and don't leave anything to chance.